But when you take a step back and you look where the NASDAQ is, how is it different than when it was here, than when it was here, than when it was here, and here, and here? Welcome to Access a Trader, the number one community for those who are committed to taking control of their trading in order to achieve success, profitability, and longevity. Thank you for joining us. Here's Dan Shapiro to help you find your edge, master your process, and own your future. Hey guys, good morning everybody. Welcome to uh, another edition of uh, the AccessToTrader.com weekend update show. Hope everybody is uh, doing well. Just a quick uh, piece of business before we uh, get into this broadcast. If you are uh, planning to join us uh, for next week, whether it's uh, the full webinar or uh, the private uh, audio feed, uh, we are doing uh, a pretty cool uh, panel show. Uh, usually once a month we do a pancakes and pivots kind of off hours Q and A. You know, off hours a lot of times it's much easier to answer uh, a lot of questions in depth uh, during the course of the day. Uh, so we usually do this the first Sunday of every single month. Tomorrow is a very very special uh, pancakes and pivots. Uh, it is going to be a panel of uh, traders just uh, like a lot of you guys uh, who have been trading for less than two three years. Uh, some of you guys are obviously under uh, the pattern day trading rule and having your own uh, journey, how to navigate it. Um, and this will be hosted by Kenyon. Okay. Uh, and this panel, it's not going to be one of those uh, one of those scenarios that somebody says, well, I turned $5,000 into $3 million. No, it's not. It's more about the psychology of how they are navigating the markets, um, the discipline, okay, uh, the process, the discipline, uh, the mentality behind every single day, what to do, what they've been doing right, what they've been do doing incorrectly, the things that they've omitted. So it's a really, really cool uh, show. I know a lot of you guys have been trading uh, less than three years. Uh, unfortunately, I have nothing to uh, input into this conversation. So that's why Kenyon uh, will be um, moderating this, but it should be really, really good. Um, if you are watching this on Saturday, right? And I, I believe the video will come out on Saturday, um, Sunday, right? Sunday is nine o'clock uh, in the webinar will be uh, the live event. If you are watching this after Sunday, don't worry about it. It will be recorded and sent to you uh, shortly after. So just kind of a cool announcement. So for all you guys who are in that kind of a, that same boat uh, trading less than three years, uh, you know, struggling with a smaller account and trying to figure out the best way to kind of navigate, uh, this will be a pretty good value. Uh, the link in the description will be somewhere in the video. Kyler will put it in. He's really, really good at all that uh, graphic stuff. Uh, so most important part is if you are interested, uh, come join us tomorrow, it should be uh, pretty good. So let's talk about the tape. So market was down this week, right? The market was down, uh, the Dow was down 1% this week. That's it. The S&P was down 1% this week. And you know, you see a lot of people sensationalizing this week, like this was the world's worst week, Armageddon in the history of the world. Okay, let me, let me just give you guys a quick history lesson, really quick. When the internet bubble imploded, it was the absolute worst six months that you can see in dissipation of capital. Very, very quickly, very, very aggressively, right? That was memorable. After 9-11, okay, and I traded through 9-11, you couldn't buy stocks because you were afraid of a terrorist attack. You couldn't short stocks because, well, number one, you were afraid that these terrorists were gonna get caught and the market was gonna rally uh, rally aggressively against you. That was memorable, right? Very, very aggressive conditions. The two and a half, almost three years of the mortgage crisis, okay, that we thought there was an Armageddon of our global economy. We don't know what was about to happen, okay? That was memorable. March of 2020, that we introduced this global pandemic that we had the worst month in the history of the world, that was memorable. The market was down 1%, okay, 1%, tested the 50-day moving average, and that's it. There was nothing memorable, memorable about this day, about last week. There was nothing aggressive about this week. There was nothing materialistic that put you on tilt about this week. It was another long, right, long steps into a very, very long career. That's it, okay. The market was very organic. The market was very technically ready to move in the bias that it did. And oh, by the way, in between a lot of really good aggressive selling, there was a lot of really good aggressive action this week uh, to the downside. There was sprinkled in a 700 point update in the Dow and a 300 point update for the NASDAQ. So if you took that recipe, right, that recipe, 
and put it into the mortgage crisis, the meltdown, 9-11. This was a day at the beach versus a memorable event. So guys, especially for you new traders, you don't have a long history. Um, you know, you don't have a long history to kind of go back into your database. This was just one week out of many, many weeks. So relax, take a step back. If you got caught off guard of what you didn't see coming, that's okay, okay? You're new to this business, okay? You're not supposed to know everything. You're not supposed to see uh, all the signs and recognize all the risks that are in front of you. A lot of you guys are, are, are brand new and you're trading uh, off of the incredibly aggressive market and incredibly aggressive gains that the market has produced over the last several weeks. So this is something new. This is your, your, really, your, your, your really second shot at adversity. Remember, pandemic, March 2020. This wasn't it. 1% versus 3,000 point Dow days, uh, you know, only two years ago, you know, a thousand point NASDAQ decline uh, only a couple of years ago. This was nothing compared to that. So uh, a lot of times traders sensationalize what they see in front of them and make it more crazy than what it is. This was very organic. This is very high probability. And this is all technically uh, technically confirmed. So this is a time in your life that you don't want to make things, you know, you don't want to make a mountain out of a molehill. You don't want to sensationalize something there that wasn't. We are basically, you know, a stone throws away from the last run of all time highs. All we did this week was retest back to the 50 day moving average. If you guys remember, we reclaimed the 50 day moving average on October the 18th. And October the 18th, because the 50 day was so important, that started a two month, two and a half month, really, really aggressive move in, in the equities markets, right? And it took all asset classes with it. It also took uh, the, the Bitcoins of the worlds with it. Everything went higher. And this week, things got aggressive. Technical started breaking down off of minor levels, the five, the 10, the 20, 100 day moving average, but the 50 day moving average, when you look at your research and you go, kind of take a step back and kind of just breathe a little bit, right? B breathe a little bit and calm down. All we did this week is retest the 50 day moving average that we reclaimed on October the 18th. Nothing more, nothing less. And this was just a basic scenario of gravity is real. You had some Fed talk coming in. Okay, cool. You had a new variant that was introduced. Okay, cool. Nothing that we haven't seen before. And all we did was organically, successfully, okay, and we'll get to that in a second, retest the 50-day moving average, bounce off the 50-day moving average, and right now the world is not gonna end, okay? Everything is okay, Christmas is still on, and the most important part is now, at least we have a definitive line in the sand going forward in the future, so if the bears take control of that level, then you can start preparing for sell side bias. But until that happens, we again, we're above the 50 day moving average. You have to give the bulls the benefit of doubt. Doesn't mean the market will go up on, on, on Monday. Cause again, if you, when I go through my research over this weekend, you know, 90% of everything uh, that I'm preparing for on Monday is definitely on the sell side, but it doesn't mean the market can't have a dead cat bounce for two, three, four days and even re start reclaiming macro levels. And if those macro levels start reclaiming again, then all these stocks that were weak, that successfully back tested into major support, then they're going to start getting healthy again. Then bulls will start getting uh, more aggressive and sellers will start getting tired and start being complacent at the levels we are. But at least again, trade on data. Don't start talking about this is the worst week no okay until you traded through 9 11 until you traded through the internet bubble until, until you traded for three years okay not three days three years of the mortgage crisis what we saw last week was again to put it into perspective pretty much any random week that you're going to have in your trading career stocks go up stocks go down the most important part is our opinions mean absolutely nothing it's all about technical analysis and getting clues through data. So just take that in mind for grain of salt. When you look at where the big technical picture is, and again, this is supposedly a seasonality of strength, right? This is traditionally uh, a market that is supposed to go higher, but supposed to and actually will are two different things. And when you look at the reality of what the market has been, we've been in this bullish cycle, okay? Look, look at the weekly view of the cues. Does this look scary to you? Which part of this reminds you of 9-11, the mortgage crisis, or any worst case scenario you've seen, right? I'll wait. It's just reality, guys. Sometimes, again, we build things up in our heads 
to kind of put things that are not there. Okay, I've done it myself. Uh, I know every single human being, if they're human, they do it themselves. So it's very, very easy to make something out of nothing. But when you take a step back and you look where the NASDAQ is, how is it different than when it was here, than when it was here, than when it was here, and here, and here, right? Guys, really, I'm telling you, take a deep breath, especially if you're newer traders. You know, take off the, you know, take off the panic button, take off, you know, everything that you're sensationalizing in your head right now that this market was in your head versus the reality. All this was was a successful back test to the 50 day moving average. Like I said before, now at least we have a complete line in the sand going into uh, going into next week. And if we start testing this line in the sand, then you should start again, starting putting yourself in a position of strength. Uh, whether it's hedging your portfolio, whether it's trading exclusively uh, on the short side or making an adult decision. If you need to stay out of the market, stay out of the market. But again, don't make this more than it actually is. So going into this week, again, although we reclaimed and the bulls did a great, great job, although we reclaimed the 50 day moving average, when you do your research, you're going to see a lot of names getting really beat up, especially in technology name. If you saw what happened this week, uh, Tesla had a great run and then Tesla started losing organic levels and that's the name of the game. They started losing organic levels, the five. Everybody knows how important the five day moving average is, at least for me. The five, the 10, the birth of the trade, the 20, which is macro support and had a really, really aggressive move into this rising wedge. So Tesla, look at the bottom channel here. There's no reason to guess if Tesla's gonna go higher or lower. Wait for these channels to confirm. Are there are there intermediate channels that you can take advantage of? Absolutely, but at least here's your big picture, right? The lows from November the 15th is your big picture. That's also going to correlate with this rising 50-day moving average. You don't have to guess it's gonna go lower. Wait for this level to get taken out, and if it does, well, hell, it's gonna go lower. If it doesn't, and they start reclaiming the five, 10-day moving average, it's gonna go higher. A name like NVIDIA, same thing, right? NVIDIA had this really, really rock star move it tested the 20 day moving average successfully, bounced above it, had a really aggressive uh, sell off this week until the bulls defended uh, the prices towards the end of the day. You don't need to, again, you don't need to guess. Wait for this 20 day moving average. If it gets, if bears start reclaiming this 20 day moving average and confirm it, then we're gonna go down to this bottom channel here. If the bulls start getting aggressive and the NASDAQ truly did hold the 50 day moving average, then if, if Nvidia starts reclaiming the five and the 10 day moving average, well, guess what? Then it's gonna go back to its 52 week highs. Now there are definitely levels, there are definitely names that are starting to really come in, okay? And they started breaking technical levels. Like Rivian is no Tesla. It's no Lucid, hell. I don't even know if they're a Nikola. Okay, let's let's not get out of control. I don't even know if Nikola even produces anything. But the point is, you can see the the hype that it ran up, the the you know deflation of the balloon, and now we've had the lowest close in this whole formation. And if the market starts confirming level, then yeah, this is a clear shot back to its IPO lows for bigger macro moves, right? A name like that looks like it's really really ready to fall apart. A lot of these earnings plays have been fantastic this week, have been fantastic last week. Like like a name like Salesforce, right? They blew up on earnings. It tested the same level here three times in a row, okay? If this thing starts building below these earnings lows, then this thing's gonna have a really, really aggressive move down for several weeks. Just, it has, uh, just like we've dem been demonstrating for weeks and weeks and weeks, and names like a Zillow or FUBU or Roku uh, or uh, Best Buy, right? Or Best Buy, just real, the earnings low plays have been absolutely outstanding. So again, guys, take a deep breath, prepare for both sides of the market. That's the only thing you could do. If you're an investor and you feel antsy, okay? Uh, if you feel antsy, if you feel that you don't have control of this market, well, get your control back, right? Isn't that the most important part? Wh whatever type of trader you are, you wanna make sure you get the control back. So how do you get control back as of a trader? So if you are uncomfortable with your position, okay, uh, as a professional trader, what you can do is either, you have several choices. You either get rid of the position, right? You either get rid of the position uh, or you hedge your book. You don't have to sit there defensive, okay? That's the last thing you wanna do. You don't wanna sit there defensive. You don't wanna sit there and put yourself in a position that you don't have any control. Have control. So if you're, if you're, tech, if you're heavily invested in tech, short the cues against your book until cues start showing some, 
uh, some, some signs of stability, that the market has stopped going down. Don't just sit there and watch your portfolio bleed. You hear people talking about it all the time, oh my God, my portfolio's taking a hit. Short some cues against it, right? Short some spies against it. Do everything you have to possibly do rationally to protect your investments. Why just sit there and watch your portfolio bleed? There's no guarantee your stocks will ever come back. So at least put yourself in a position of strength instead of position of weakness. It's a very, very important part. And if you don't feel comfortable trading with the market, and again, I hear a lot of people talking about, well, cash is a position. Okay, I guess. Put it a different way, right? Put it a different way. The market never has to snap back. That's what we, I, I've seen that for years and years and years. We'd always like to believe that the bulls will always come back uh, and, and really reclaim things. And, we, and that has happened majority of the times, but they don't have to happen. We've seen some markets for two, three years decline very, very aggressively. So if you don't want to uh, participate, obviously, on the long side of a diving market, you know, God gave us again, two hands, right? Two feet, two eyes, two ears. This does both sides of the market. You don't need to sit there again, sit there complaining about how the market is irrational. The market's not irrational. The market goes up or the market goes down. You have two choices, either participate or don't participate, but don't give yourself a, a clutch, a crutch uh, to turn around and say, you can't do anything about it. The market doesn't suck. The market doesn't suck. Okay, you're just not positioned to capitalize on what the market is telling you what's about to happen. And that's okay as well. Okay, there's nothing wrong with that. But again, remember, the market never needs to do what you want it to do. Uh, the, the reality of the market might be a little bit different than your reality. You either have to adapt or move to the side. But to sit there and complain of what you think is happening or if the market's being manipulated, it's the stock market. It goes up, it goes down. It's up to you to conform or do everything possible to protect yourselves from exposure that you are not uh, prepared for. So let's talk about uh, Friday's session. Again, the whole week was uh, incredibly aggressive. When you see moves, you know, when you see multi-day moves of absolute destruction, uh, th that's technical analysis. That's just not stocks randomly going down. And this is kind of the whole thing we've been kind of preaching for years and years and years. If you've been watching this broadcast, it's all technical. It's not about opinions. I'm the king of the idiots. There's not a bigger idiot than me on the planet. Okay, my, I, I'm not a good guesser. The market can go up, the market go down. We have no idea. So we prepare through data. We prepare through technical analysis. And once you see stocks confirm, whether to the long side, to the short side, our job, whatever your process is, is to take advantage. So let's talk about uh, let's talk about uh, Friday's session. Uh, net NTES 105, uh, if it builds below, can flush. It, it, pr primarily, the day was all was all selling. So here was the 105 level, right? Here's the 105 level. It confirmed it uh, pre-market, went down very, very aggressively. You're going to see a lot of names. You see this low here, 105.30s? You can see here, just incredible. There's a lot of aggression on Friday. And unfortunately, uh, if you were one of those traders who were buying the dips on levels that got confirmed, you really felt it. You really felt it very aggressively. So NTS took out that 105, just got slammed all the way down to this 100 area. Uh, still looks lower. Uh, still definitely looks lower. Rivian, uh, I still think this thing tests the IPO lows. Uh, Rivian 106 held three times. If it builds below, can flush. Rivian got hit. Rallied back a little bit into the close. But here's the 106 level. And again, guys, the, mo the more times a stock tests uh, the same level over and over and over, the higher probability uh, it's going to finally snap. So 106 was low here, 106 was low here. Finally snapped that 106, went all the way down to 100. Uh, if it snaps that 100 this week, I have to assume this thing's going to see uh, its IPO lows of 95.20. Uh, NVIDIA, you know, I was actually watching the video to the upside. It came nowhere close to 326, so obviously never confirmed. And this is when you know the market was very, very aggressive. When was the last time you saw Microsoft down 10 that had nothing to do with earnings? But that's the whole point. You know, that's the whole point of technical analysis being ready for it. Uh, Microsoft uh, 327.75, if it builds below, uh, can flush. Yeah, I would say it flushed. Okay, uh, I definitely can say it flushed. So here is the whole channel here. So there's 328, 328, 328, uh, 327, 80s. So once this thing took out this 328, uh, 328, 327, 70 level, this thing went down $10 for Microsoft to go down 10. And again, you can see what the common denominator is traded down to, right? The 50 day moving average. So again, here's another example of a line in the sand uh, going forward. So huge move, huge move on uh, Microsoft uh, coin got absolutely destroyed. 283 if it builds below can flush. Here was coin. 
right? So coin took out the 283, again, went down all the way down to the 50 day moving average, went all the way down to 258. Again, another successful test of the 50 day moving average, mirroring the NASDAQ uh, 100. Another company out of 8,000 companies is gonna have a line in the sand uh, going into the next week. Uh, Square was an absolute amazing, amazing mover. Uh, amazing, amazing mover from Friday, uh, excuse me, from Thursday's session. Uh, took out the 205 level, traded down all the way down to 93. I was actually looking for an upside move on Square, okay? Um, upside move, obviously, it never came, but there was a sneaky pivot there that just never uh, got confirmed. Snow, I was watching to the upside, never got confirmed. Uh, Marvel, not a big move, 87 needs to build, only went up like a dollar and change. Uh, but the ones that came in got ki got killed. Uh, not only 272 is the next stop, 262 is the next stop. Rivian take on the way down, went down six. Microsoft got killed. CRM, I still love, 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 love. Guys, watch that 251 level going into next week. Uh, Microsoft is getting destroyed, take down much more. And again, here is the, the whole perfect example of kind of thinking rationally. As much as everything was getting slammed, Here's the, re here's the reality, you know, for experienced traders only, and I'm sorry guys, this is 380, 70 support, not 180. My dyslexia kicks in from time to time. The 50 day moving average was 380, 70s. For experienced traders only, watch for a bounce there. So here was, here was the cues, and this is my whole point. You know, okay, there, was no, there was nothing sensationalized about Friday's session. This shouldn't have been a memorable event. So here was the 380, 70s, everybody see that? Here's the 380, 70s, and the bulls finally reclaimed it on the close and rallied at about $3 into the close. So this market is very organic. Uh, it's very driven by technical analysis. Yes, absolutely. We have new variants, uh, we have Fed, we have everything still on the table to make things scary, but it's very tradable. It's scary is being unprepared. Sp scary is being not in control. It could be scary. You know, you know what's scary? Chasing the stock up 200% of the day. You know what's scary? Jumping you know, jumping into a trade because some guy on, on, on Twitter says it's going higher. That's scary. Technical analysis is not. It's organic, it's boric, but the most important part is you're in control and it's highly uh, predictable. Guys, have a great day. Have a great weekend. Again, for all you guys who are joining us uh, for uh, this uh, up and coming week, tomorrow is a very, very cool uh, panel. Hope you guys make it. If not, God bless. Have a great, great weekend. And I'll see you all on the field next week. Take care.